Remember the feeling of entering our lobby and easily finding the game you're looking for? Remember the sights and sounds of online poker at its best or testing your skills against the pros? Remember the nonstop action of rush poker and destroying egos one hand at a time in the most exciting tournaments available? It was a thrill you could only get at FullTiltPoker.net. Good news, the thrill is back. FullTiltPoker.net, it's where we play. Hello, my babies. I am here right now with two poker players who need no introduction. I'm going to give a little one anyway. We've got Team Poker Stars Dan Negreanu here and a member of the infamous Full Tilt Professionals, Gus Hansen. And these two have been kicking up a bit of a brouhaha on the internet. We're going to get to the bottom of it right now, exclusive style. Gus, I think maybe you're the one who is to credit slash blame for starting all this. What is happening? Well, you know what? I was uh, getting back into all the poker, the online stuff, things weren't doing too good. And then you walk down memory lane and find uh, <laughs> some of the good stories. And, and this guy came up and I thought, I'd say, hey, Daniel, how's it going? So how, so you said, how's it going? Basically needling Daniel over a hand from years ago. Yes. How often do you actually think about that hand? Is it like a daily thing and you just all of a sudden decided to, to tweet at him <laughs> or it just dawned on you? No, like I said, it kind of dawned on, on me. I mean, obviously I remember the hand, but uh, most of the time when it comes up, it's actually when people ask me about the hand, whether I thought I played it well, whether I thought Daniel played it shitty, or whatever happened in that hand. So it came up, and I thought I'd uh, just bring it to, to his attention. Now, Daniel, what was your immediate reaction? Because I know when people say things to me on the internet that sort of they think is a joke, it hurts mm. for a little while at first, then you can kind of calm down. What was your reaction? Well, my first reaction was, okay, he must not be doing very well recently because <laughs> why else would he be reliving a hand from so many years ago, right? So sometimes people need to do something to regain that self-confidence. And for him watching that, he could say, wow, you know, that money's probably been spent. I don't know what Gus has done with it. But uh, I, so then I decided to look, you know, look in the results of how he's doing. And I sent him a little reminder um, that uh, he hasn't had the best year this year either. So Yeah, something about his graph, was yeah, it? Yeah, well, I, I read his graph and I was going to congratulate him and then I realized I was reading it upside down. Because it, yeah, I had it backwards, but um, yeah, no, it was, it was a nice little reminder. I get I get asked about that hand more than any other hand in history, and uh, it's frustrating because it's a losing hand and I have to relive it. But people always say, "Do you remember that hand?" Like, no, no idea what you're talking about. I actually, uh, for people who don't know the hand, can we get a quick recap really? of what happened? <laughs> really, <laughs> Gus, Gus eats your lunch or something? I think really? is the end result. <laughs> you don't really need to. Know. Everyone knows about this hand, okay? Apparently, I'm the only one. Fine, no he problem. had four of a kind. I didn't. Let's just leave it there. And how often? <laughs> and it was not a straight flush. <laughs> uh, other than when people ask you about it, how often do you relive that hand? Now, obviously, I guess it just came to Gus when he sort of needed some inspiration. Is it something that you think about every once in a while, or is it? Did you had you forgotten about it till he needled you? But to be honest with you, the, I thought about it most after actually talking to Gus later about the hand and his thought process on it. And the biggest thing that stuck out to me was he thought he checked the hand because he thought I would bet aces or kings on that river which I actually wouldn't have. So based on his read, he was going for max value, but he misread my hand, so he got max value as it turned out, which is extra tilting. I don't know if he's telling me that on purpose or just to tilt me more. Ah, uh, a, <laughs> he's doing reverse, a, reverse. Is that legitimately what you thought? Uh, at the time, that's what I thought. He in double reverse. In, in hindsight, I think I actually played the hand fairly bad, but as uh, Daniel pointed out, I did get the max result because it was basically a uh, monster versus monster. So, I mean, uh, it turned out good anyway. So you guys went back and forth on the internet, a couple jabs here and there. Now all of a sudden, we're in London, we're here. There's all kinds of uh, fanfare around. What, what is happening right now, today, over the next few days? There, there's some kind of match going on. Uh, go ahead, Gus. Well, I mean, like you said, there was a, some banter going forth and back. And personally, I think it's, almost, it's more fun when actually something happens after the banter. So, uh, I mean, we decided to come out with a format where uh, we would go head to head again. And uh, that's here today in London. So you guys are literally putting your money where your mouths are. What is the actual match? You guys aren't doing it alone, by the way, as you can see behind these two uh, handsome chaps. There are other handsome chaps. 
Uh, so what is the actual matchup? Tell us the stakes. Tell us uh, who's playing who, what the format is, all that. Okay, well, first of all, I want to say that um, I've always wanted to do this sort of thing. I think it's like it's a fun way to you know create some interest in poker and get some guys together and create sort of like the team format. So what we did was, um, well, he had his team of two guys, or his henchmen behind him, as you see, Tom Dwan and Victor Blom. Uh, I had a bigger Gus, selection. Are you, are you comfortable with that term, henchmen? <laughs> do you prefer lackeys, yeah, toadies? Yeah, well, well, I mean, I've always uh, used to be uh, the young guy, but it's we are many, many years ago, so now I'm the old one, and I need uh, some of the young blood to yeah. come and support me. You say henchmen, he says young blood. Right. Continue. So essentially, uh, he, you know, I had a much wider group of people to choose from. So, you know, I went to Twitter and sort of asked people who they thought. It got down to a group of about five people. And then I asked those five people who they thought would be the best two to choose. And they went with Isaac Haxton and Elkie. So the, the matches we're going to see today, you're going to see Elkie playing against Victor Blom. You're going to see um, Isaac Haxton against Tom Dwan. And then, you know, then all, obviously me and Gus are going to go off in, in the last match. So there's all, there, we're also putting up our own money, but there's also like a, a, an amount of money for the team as well, which is cool. Okay, so there is some, some cash on the line. It's three heads up matches, and you're playing uh, r multiple rounds or just one, one game. Well, it's going to be three tables simultaneously. On you know, he's the home team, so we get to play you know play on his side, and uh, we're going to play three three matches at the same time. Sit and go structure. It's pretty deep. The matches will take 90 minutes to uh, two hours probably, and we're going to play three at once. If you win two out of three, you win your match. All right, there it is. Now, uh, is there anything else on the line other than obviously pride and obviously all this smack talk? But is there any sort of public shaming we can expect? Oh, God. Or uh, you scare me with these a, vets. a videotaped apology, anything like that, or is it strictly like I want to get to raise my hands up in the air? Well, basically, from my point of view, I don't want to see what happens if I lose, so I'm just not going to lose. I mean, that's that's basically it. I don't want to deal with it. Oh, uh, so you just know that the the onslaught of bragging that's coming, not just from Daniel, but from these two and basically everyone on the internet. Your inbox is going to be full for a while. Well, he's a very strong uh, Twitter personality, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a little afraid, yeah. yeah. I think what he's most afraid of is, is you know, when I actually do win, that it's going to be a real, I'm going to mention it on Twitter every day, like, oh, I just had breakfast, and by the way, I beat Gus last night. And then next week, yeah, you know, just going to the store today, because, uh, you know, thinking about beating, you know, it's going to be like endless, the stream of tweets. People are going to get annoyed. He's going to be the most nauseous and stop following me. I'm all sure. right, well, that, that's only once there is a winner. We have to, you have to get there first. Obviously, all poker players, you guys think you have an edge. Gus, you must think you have an edge in this competition. Yes? Uh, well, I think I was asked uh, that question early, and I, um, I feel confident. You feel let's confident. Say, let's use that word. Obviously, I mean, Daniel is a great player. I mean, he has a great team. I have a pretty strong team as well, so uh, I think it's going to be a close match, and uh, I'd like to give the edge to uh, this beautiful group to of three professionals. People. Yeah. All right. Can you say anything that's a little more? Um, I don't know. He's kind of straddling the line there. Can you be a little more confident in your team? Well, I, honestly, you know, I'm not going to give away which one, but I think we're 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 going to win two to one. Um, I feel like that's, I think we're a favorite. Wait, wait, hold on. This is good. Where do you think the weak spot is? Well, I don't think we have any weak spots. I think that one Where do you think is the least strong spot? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I would say this. Okay, I'm going to say that I think that the most interesting matchup is obviously Victor Blom has, you know, dominated No Limit Heads Up. Elki is a little bit more new to this arena. He's a bit more of like, he's got tons of experience, but not nearly as much as Victor. So I think that's sort of the wild card match for us because, um, you know, again, the experience is obviously in their favor, but I feel like he's the right guy to take on Victor. Gus, which member of Daniel's team do you think is the biggest luck box? <laughs> the biggest luck box? I actually think, which could be a little scary since he called it the dark horse matchup, I think it's Elkie. Yeah, right. He's saying, That's it is such a luck box. <laughs> <laughs> now, based on what people are saying on the internet, who do you think the people think is the favorite? Well, I think the people definitely think that, uh, that you guys are because they've, the, the experience is there, and uh, you know they, these guys play nosebleed cash game all the time. But I think because this is a little more tournament formatted, that you know the blind the blinds are going to get smaller. I think we have an edge when that happens. Do you think that that these guys will be out of their element enough to sort of not be at their best possible game since it is a little more tournamenty? Uh, well, tournamenty. I mean, obviously you have to adjust the blind and antes or whatever mm -hmm. the structure is going to be. But I mean. I like my two guys. They're, they're able to think for themselves. They, they know how to adjust. Is there any chance that I can get you to reveal some of your strategy right now, or even something you just want to put out there to throw Daniel off or not throw him off or double reverse bluff him again? Strategy, what that's, does that mean? 
No. So that was going to be my next question. Have you been preparing in any way? Have you guys had a team meeting? Has there been, is there like a secret clubhouse? Uh, actually, I went out to dinner last night uh, and did talk about my matchup against Daniel, how I was going to play and so forth. But unfortunately, I wasn't with my two teammates. So it wasn't top-notch preparation, which I'm sure the the guy and his uh, teammates have been doing. So you went out and talked strategy with like a couple of dates last night who had no idea they couldn't bounce any ideas uh, both off Both ma males and females. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My problem was, you know, I did try to talk to my teammates about how Gus plays and uh, they all basically said, I have no idea. They don't get any of it. They just don't understand it. I don't think anyone understands Gus's approach. So they all talked amongst themselves and I kind of listened. Wait, just... didn't he write a book called Every Hand Revealed and they still have no idea no, and, yeah, how <laughs> Gus plays? See, even with a book written, Gus, I think he's really good at just changing up his style and he has a very unique approach, especially to playing heads up where he does his own thing and he doesn't conform to the typical online strategy that you see. So I think Gus is a really tough guy to play because of that. Yeah, uh, obviously. Now, you went out to dinner with uh, your team last night mm -hmm. also. Are, would you say you're actually friends with the people on your team? Absolutely. No, it was great. This was actually, in a lot of ways, like team, um, like sort of team bonding because obviously everybody wanted a chance to play, you know, and, uh, of course, Jason Mercier, Vanessa Selps, and Eugene Kachilov didn't get chosen, but they've been so supportive. They're going to show up today, and they've been really helping in terms of, uh, you know, giving strategy to us on, on what they know of, of, of the opponents we're playing. Now, and you went out with your team here in London last night. Let's talk about the setting. We're here at EPT London. Do you think that sort of uh, this is sort of like a level playing field for you too? I know Daniel feels very comfortable here. He likes all the vegan food. He has he doesn't complain about his hotel room pillows. Do you think that this is enough of a you know a neutral ground to have this event? I think uh, London is a good city. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable. I'm staying with a good friend of mine. So I mean. I feel relaxed, so I don't. <laughs> I don't see why uh, why Paris or any other place. I mean, maybe if uh, it was Denmark or Monaco, I would feel more at home. But London is a good city, so well, I think it's a level playing field. London's pretty fair then. Now I'm actually like kind of entranced by this photo over here. I think that this looks excellent. Don't get me wrong, but these th that's a really cool picture. Really cool team. What does it sort of take to become uh, one of the professionals at Full Tilt? What kind of you know? What kind of what, what's the vibe there? Uh, I think um, each one of us brings a kind of a unique style to the table. I mean, uh, I haven't played a lot against Victor Blom, but the little I've played, he uh, basically brings an insane to a new level. <laughs> but obviously, there's a method behind the madness. So I think, I mean, all three of us have a very unique style that you can't really pick up by it reading some random poker book or something like that. I think the other team is a little more methodical. So, I mean, if you bring your own unique style and are successful at it, obviously that's <coughs> one thing you have to be. You have to be successful because everybody can be crazy, but it's a lot tougher to be crazy and actually be successful at it at the poker table. Well, Ike Haxton had some choice words about uh, the unique style of Durr. In a recent interview, he, thought, uh, he said he thought Durr was overrated. Hmm. Well, Do you agree? Disagree? Well, Do you have anything you want to say back to Ike Haxton, maybe? Uh, well, I think I'm just going to say read him and weep when, <laughs> he, when he gets beaten up later tonight. An yeah. oldie but a goodie. Um, now, Daniel, you said that your predictions are, uh, your conservative prediction is two and one. Well, yeah, it Gus, has to be. your prediction, so are you going to say the same thing, probably? Uh, well, we're nice people, so yeah, we're just. I will say there's something really interesting about what they all have in common, and they all are willing to gamble, like in big ways. Like, obviously, Victor Blom is historic for playing anybody in the world, so is Gus, and so is Tom. Um, they have a lot of chutzpah, and they're willing to put it out on the line. It's, I think that, that's the one thing I think about those. And also, like, that picture, something about Gus it looks just like he looked like when he fought Theo Jorgensen, like right after the fight. <laughs> His eyes look a little sunken Ooh. and beat up. It's good. I don't know. That's just what I'm vibing. Which yeah, is I don't know. It does. You do look a little beat up there, Gus. Maybe like you're thrown <laughs> from a moving car. Anything you want to say about Daniel's photo over there? I don't know. I would attack the hair. That's you, where I go. I, yeah. There was still hair there. Uh, I mean, it's it's so easy to see that it's photoshopped so many times. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm not even even sure that's the three guys we're playing tonight. So, I mean, that's all I have to say. I will say that before this, Gus was like, "Oh wow, Elkie looks reasonable for once," <laughs> and it, we all have tans, you know. 
Yeah, well, they, we show we, we know, Photoshop we the cans. poker players spend a lot of time in the sun. <laughs> yeah, that's Daniel right. spends a lot of time uh, getting sprayed, I think. Spray tans. Yeah, that's Daniel. I thing. forgot to get one for this uh, Before we cut things loose here, guys, uh, any uh, last words, any sort of last little needles? Are you sure you don't want to throw, like, a quick little public shaming bet in there where, you know, the other one has to confess to being so much worse of a poker player? That's all right. You guys work it out. But anyway, uh, last chance, last words. Well, good luck, Gus. I have a good feeling that it's going to come down to our match, one and one, so to do this. Well, I have the same prediction. I already predicted that our match is going to be the longest one, so... Uh, well, especially because you limp. Oh. I got to know that. See, that was what I was talking about. Dang it, I spilled the beans. He got me. He's up He's up already because now he knows that I know that he knows that I limp. I can't even follow. It's more levels than Inception. Honestly, I can't deal with it. So there you have it. Don't forget, you can watch all the action at Full Tilt Poker. And don't forget to show us some love with the hashtag Tilt vs. Stars. That's Tilt versus Stars. Thanks. We'll see you later. It's where we come to match skill against ego where we check, call, and raise. It's where night turns into morning and friends turn into foes. Where odds can be tested and aces can get cracked. Where the river can turn deuces into trips and fear into confidence. Because uncertainty is a rush and what happens next is anyone's guess. Fulltiltpoker.net, it's where we play.